Welcome, Welcome to, to Shade, Shade in, in the, the city. city. I'm your girl, Trace. It's no. And we're getting into Love and Marriage Huntsville season six, episode two. You Scots to chill. <laughs> um, so yes, if you have not already Shade Squad, please make sure. That's huh? really cute. That is cute, isn't it? Really um, cute. If you haven't already, please make sure that you hit that like button. And that subscribe button. And y'all, let's get into it. I need a refill. Let's get shady. is explaining to Mel that she understands her disconnecting and needing her space, but also feels that it's weird as hell. Um, Stormy asked Mel if she ever thought maybe you want to let your friend know that you're disconnecting. And Mel says, but I thought you already knew that about me. She so said, yeah, about everybody else, not with me. Right. I so, know you did it with me. So Stormy brings up how That's where I was coming from. I get you, Stormy. I get it. So Stormy brings up I disconnect how, too. What I don't happened? disconnect from I said because I disconnect too. I don't disconnect from that one. I think that's why that's why I get where Stormy coming from. Like, but they're not best friends. Who's her best friend? No, I'm saying they're not best friends. Who's Mel's best friend? Mel don't. I don't think she. I'm sure she has one, and we don't know her. Mm. She keeps her private. Oh. Smart. Who's her, best, who's her best friend on the show? I don't know. Kimmy? Kimmy is her best friend on the show. And she didn't get shut. Oh, Kimmy. you mean as of this season? <laughs> as of this season? Because she's a flip-flopper. She keeps on flipping them out. She keeps on changing because she does like this. She can't well, keep a best friend. Mel says, you know, Basically, I you knew this about me, and Stormy brings up how she heard that she heard she did that, but she didn't realize that this pertained to her as well. Um, and brings up the reunion, how their rooms were right next door to each other, and they pretty much didn't talk the whole day. And she's like, you know, it was my first reunion. I, you know, kind of felt the way. And when Stormy finally asked her what's up, she said they would talk, and it's been two months now. So Mel is surprised that Stormy refuses to DM her when she has before, um, especially since she didn't have her number. Now, well, Mel well, the problem was she thought she had her number. So she's like, why am I DM? Why am I going to DM you if I if I have your number? She's like, but she didn't. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Um, so Mel says real friend, her real friends, are really respectful of her space and boundaries. Where they at though? Where they at though? <laughs> They're hidden. She keeps them away. Yeah. <laughs> and says when her and Stormy They're first, disconnected. You know what? <laughs> In the dial tone. <laughs> so she says when her, her and Stormy first connected, that that's something that they bonded on, not really having enough time and, you know, because they got so much going on. And Mel says right now her space is tight. And Stormy asks if it's a trust issue and question if someone, um, you know, if someone doesn't have her number, does that mean you don't trust them? And so Mel says it has a lot to do with trust and says her number has been changed for a little minute now because people were doing stuff. Uh, and Stormy brings up Mel live tweeting and saying that uh, someone recorded her conversation when she was talking about Martell, which we saw Destiny run back to Martell with. Um, and Stormy says she started receiving notifications from people uh, stating Mel was accusing her of recording their conversation. And she's oh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't think it was Mel was accusing her. I thought it was like fans were accusing her. Well, fans were accusing her. Yeah. Oh, I was, girl, you just changed the whole narrative. I said, oh. No, but fans are basically because Mel went and live tweeted and said like, oh, I was recorded, da, 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 whatever. But she didn't say it was Stormy. No, but the, the fans, fans were. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're so funny. Oh, now you want to clear Mel's name <laughs> anyway. So no, no, no. I'm clearing Stormy. You stupid. Because 
that that would give her reason why she didn't give up the number. <clears throat> I can't wait. But, but but we're back to her not having a reason. So so stop it. And said that, you know, um basically she's confused because this is something that Mel has stated in countless YouTube videos and interviews when she went on her YouTube press tour. And I know you were trying to be shady, Stormy, but you know what? Mel, if you would like to stop by our channel and do an interview on our YouTube, I am by no means going to shit on your YouTube press tour, darling. Okay. Um, so now I won't bring this one. Uh, so <laughs> Stormy says that people were accusing her of being a snake. And Mel tells her that she's been in this game for a while and people like to, you know, run with stuff and basically tell Stormy not to worry about it. And Stormy isn't here for it and says, you know, she won't allow people to run with a false narrative about her because then people may assume that it's true. So she said, basically Stormy says she knows how to manage her expectations out of her developing friendship with Mel. That may be developing because she don't know where the hell they at right now. For all she know, Mel could have been dead in a ditch somewhere. And then Kiki pops up at Kimmy's party. And Tisha is blindsided as hell because she's like, I didn't even know this lady was going to be here. Right. Um, And she said they ain't spoken since the reunion, but she's going to keep it cute and cordial. And she did. And that was it. Did, um, she, did she actually say those words? Because that's what I wrote too. Yeah. She said she was going to oh, keep okay. it cute and cordial. Okay. Um, and then Martel, Martel. Martel, he sits down with Kimmy and asks her how she's been. She's like, I am tired, Cheryl. It's, it's been rough. I'm tired. She said, but having more Reese is the best thing that could have happened to her in this time of need, you know? So she tells him, even, you know, when him and uh, Mel broke up, does he feel like, you know, like he misses those moments where he could just like pick up the phone, tell her like all the good and bad stuff. He said, hell yeah, he missed that. He was like, for real, for real. He was like, you know, that he don't even be wanting to go out of town no more because it's just not meaningful. And she says, um, they'll always be a piece of, like, they'll always be a piece of them to them. You will always not. be a part of me. I'm part of you indefinitely. No, no. <laughs> I bet you Mel would be like, you know what? Off that. <laughs> don't, don't cancel the interview, man. <laughs> I don't know if you got something about the grass green on the other side or something. With more along those lines. But that... <laughs> You best turn that jukebox off. Okay. Um, so she said, even when y'all, you know, say, leave it alone, don't talk about it. We know what's best. Martel said he ain't gonna say that no more. He know what's best. He said he just gonna stop saying it. Basically, yeah, talk your shit. Talk your shit. And she said, you know what? I am so tickled to hear that. He said, what? I ain't said nothing. And it says that he said something without saying nothing. Mm. But he meant every bit of it. But she don't want you. She don't she want don't you. Don't she don't want you. She don't want you. I 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 don't want you. Oh God. Um, so Kimmy feels that you know he's finally putting his ego aside and actually admitting that he's made some mistakes and says he's having buyer's remorse and he mm -hmm. wants that old thing back. He wants that old thing back. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess this prompts Martel to go over to Mel and ask if she's about to leave because he wants to walk her to her car. And she's like, no, <laughs> it's okay. I'm right kidding. up front. <laughs> I'm right there. <laughs> and he's and like, no, Mel, you're across the street. The street. Sir, you sound stalkerish. <laughs> well, did Why you did watch you? me come in? Guess what? This is proof. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is proof. <laughs> um, so he's like, is this your precious? Like, yes, that's my Versace. All right. So he's like, it's dangerous out here in these streets. Just let me walk you, girl. And he told her stop being difficult. You know, somebody could just come and scoop you up. So Mel, you know, she's just like done with it. She's going around saying her goodbyes. Uh, she went to Lewis and um, Tiffany. And Tiffany 
Well, I'm sorry. Lewis tries to tell her, you know, he's just trying to make sure you get to your car safely. And she's like, please do not encourage this. No, scenario. don't do it. Please don't do it. Tiffany says that her uh business partner does the same thing, you know, just so he ain't got to hear Lewis's mouth. And Martel said he just want to make sure she's okay. She is the whole mother of all his, well, of four of his kids. So, <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I shaded what I mean in the shade. <laughs> let me let me step into the sunlight. <laughs> so, in a confessional, he says Mel knows that he's a gentleman. And that's what he does. You know, she says she don't want it, but she don't mean it. And that's the mother of his children. He wants to make sure she's safe, whether they're together or not. <clears throat> Although I think I did miss a part where Mel said that um, she just want people to respect her wishes. Boundaries. Um, and um, that ain't happened. He walked into the door. Yeah. You know what I wish would have happened in that scene and what, why I thought she really didn't want him? do it well i guess her cart was parked outside but i was still hoping like some somebody would have just some man would have just came in you ready to go be like oh that's why you know what would have been better is if the man came and picked her up from the spot and she's like no i got i got somebody waiting outside for me you she wouldn't she wouldn't have said it she wouldn't have said it i don't know because she's gonna let him walk in walk in on it Mel don't care. She don't care. I know. And she Martel does. She don't care. She don't care if he see it. She don't care whether he does, whether <laughs> she don't care. So if the dude was there, she ain't going to be like, she ain't going to try to make him jealous because she really don't care. Yeah, she don't. <laughs> now, uh, Kimmy is packing for her upcoming surgery. She goes to sit down and talk with Maurice. She's trying to get everything for when they return from her surgery, like get everything situated and straight. And I, that would definitely. She even said that she made meals and stuff like that. I said, okay, Kimmy. Right. Damn and Maurice just wants her to chill out because she's doing a lot and reminds her, you know, you had a full day yesterday. You had a whole get together. Now they both agree that the event turned out well. And Maurice thinks, you know, thanks her for sticking to her end of the oh, bargain right. and basically keeping it light versus a party. So Kimmy says the whole event was good for her spirit. She was really happy to share the news that her PET scan came back clear with everyone at the same time. And Maurice said he noticed Mel wasn't really around too many people. Um, and so, you know, but he knows she got her boundaries. Again, her real friends respect her boundaries. Now, uh, Kimmy says that she thinks she talked to Martel and shared with Maurice about the conversation he had about Mel and how he thinks she thinks that, you know, Martel misses her. He basically said that Martel needs to make up his mind and says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Always. So mm -hmm. speak that. So Kimmy thinks that if Martel moves on, there's a part of him that's always going to love Mel. And Maurice counters and says, <laughs> yes. When you're the one responsible for the demise of things, you tend to live with regret. But says a woman scorn ain't nothing to play with. And it's time to move on. And says it's always going to be cold over there. Right. And he feels that Martel needs to sort out his feelings for Mel. Maurice shares that Martel tried to uh, it, that Martel tried to walk into the car and said he came back with his he head said, and, low after her. and was moping. And she was like, oh, well, did you talk to him? And she was like, no. And he was like, I clowned his ass. He said it was cold out there, wasn't it? <laughs> Is that what he said? I didn't hear that part. Oh, yeah, he did. He told him it was cold out there, but I, I didn't. Hey, sure, I got that part. I said, oh, I'm going race your ass off. <laughs> um, so Chris and his wife, Nail, are out um, at a date night. I'm happy that we finally get to meet Chris's wife. Um, and he says that he invited Martel. Martel arrives and says he didn't know that it was a date night and Chris didn't say she was coming and they'll ask you know how he was doing and martel lets us know that don't you huh but you just come in stirring the pot don't you right you just just oh i didn't know it was a date night and you know he didn't let me know that she was even gonna be here so well, my whole thing was I, he just let it okay once you know it's a date night once you know it's a date night 
All right, y'all. I'm gonna have a drink with y'all. Then I'm gonna get believe and let y'all finish y'all date night. I'm not staying for the whole thing. What I'm not about to do is say that he didn't tell me <laughs> that it was a date night or that you wasn't gonna be here. What I will say is that I interrupted y'all date night. Right. So that the um, husband don't look like a complete asshole. Right. So he says that Nail and uh, Chris have been a great source of counsel and have seen he and Mel at their best and their worst. Now, Nail asks him how's a single life, and Martell says he doesn't like it. And Nail asks if he's doing if he's dating exclusively, and That's he says, he like living as a married. He like being single while he married. Hmm. Ooh. Okay. Go on, Nail. Um. And he said he's just enjoying. I swear, it. I ain't got no drink in my cup, y'all. I ain't got no. It's just you. Um. And he says he's just enjoying himself and doesn't want to be tied down until he finds that one that makes him, you know, want to settle down because he does want to get married again and hopes to propose by the end of the year. I said, okay. And then oh, Nail, I miss that. Yeah, he wants to. By the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants you like that. A whole cheater. Boy, stop. So Nell asks if he's exclusive with Sheree yet. And Martell says she's beautiful. They get along well. And Chris asks if she's the one. Uh, Martell laughs at that comment and says that They'll see as time progresses. Now, Nell says how long he plans on dating Sheree because basically she's realized that Sheree ain't the one. Um, and he says, when God says go. And they crack up because we know that that is obviously Mel's line. And uh, he said, if God can tell Mel when to go, then he can tell Martell when he can get married again. And so Chris asked about the co-parenting situation between he and Mel and how things are going. And Martell says he'll have the kids for seven days and she won't call. And Nail says, well, with four kids, there must be some sort of communication. Um, I will say that was the one thing I was like, I understand you mad at this man, but you don't even call to talk to the kids the days he got them. Like, damn. But, you know, I was, I was like, maybe they got a cell phone. Maybe they just ain't, maybe she just ain't calling him. But aren't, isn't she buying them a phone? Okay. So. Oh, she did say that they didn't got a phone the last episode. So Martel mm -hmm. says that he doesn't like it, especially being in and out of court. He brings up how they were recently in court over the number of babysitters, which I think I talked about in the last review. Um, and he says there's like 20 of them. And Nell has a hard time believing that. And he said, but what if it's true? sounds a little OD. Yeah. Um, and basically said that, you know, he brings up a time where he was in town and she had had her brother picking up the kids from school because Mel was out of town. And he just felt like well, if I was in town, why couldn't she just reach out to me and just say, hey, why can't you get the kids? Mm -hmm. um, so he feels that, you know, the divorce has already been hard on the kids. And so he just wants to give them a sense of stability and doesn't understand why he can't get Mel to understand that. So that's what I have for them. Now, Tisha went over to Black. Black was looking different because I I initially put it as a whole nother restaurant. I said, then I got an old, they done opened up a whole new place. Oh, you are so funny. Oh, no, it was Black. It now, was she introduced herself to the new bartender, BP, and she wants to sit down and have a few drinks with her cousin, Courtney, before the crowd comes in. Now, Courtney comes in and, <clears throat> boy, can you tell these girls are related. They look like we this. have something in common. <laughs> they got the dimples and everything. I said, "Oh my god!" Now, I thought it was kind of dope. Miss Wanda ain't even on the show, and Tisha made sure she put in that cookbook plug for her. She said, "Yeah, my mama's cookbook coming now." That I said, "Oh yeah, okay. girl." I said, "Okay, we she we the plug. She the plug. go." Now, Tisha says that um, basic. No, I'm sorry, Courtney says that she's uh really good at cooking and you know she just needs to perfect it and you know make the thing beautiful and then that is show enough Wanda um Tisha says basically this is why I brought you here because you are really good at marketing and says that she just got her broker's license Courtney has been doing real estate for five years in the luxury field and is just super good at marketing and she wants her to join her um brokerage Courtney says she don't know Okay, she got some thinking to do because she just switched over from her old brokerage to the new brokerage. And, and, and you know, it's a lot money, of money. Money is moving. She just, Courtney said, you know, I'm getting that bag. Period. 
And she says, you know, she's all for doing things to help the family grow. And she does want to consider that offer. Because, you know, family better pay. Okay. Um, and, you know, she looks like, she, I'm sorry, she looks back on a time where uh, her and Kiki, I guess, really helped her out back in college. And she's super appreciative. They, uh, I because, guess she lived with both of them. Yeah, she lived with both of them. Um, and, you know, she wants to know if her and Kiki can get into a better place space teacher says that she doesn't know you know she tried and she says that they used to be really close um she said kiki started at a and t first and then told her about a scholarship program and she was super grateful um so now they're both examples for their younger cousins to follow courtney says that she thinks that she suffered a loss of the life that she could have had um and basically because of the choices that she made and she tells right. her hurt people hurt people teacher said well that's why i gotta protect myself right i ain't one of them hurt people i, and, I wasn't mad at teacher for that i was like yeah so mm -hmm. what i'm gonna do just be open-hearted mm -hmm. and then just let her hurt me again I'm mm -hmm. she said that she loves her because that's her family but she don't trust her and Look, as said, much as as much as tisha don't like mail i see you setting up some boundaries tisha hmm now, she says that she needs to fix the mistakes and not act like she's healed and actually do the work. Courtney wants to make sure that they can even coexist without drama and suggest that they need to go out and have some fun. And after a long pause, Tisha finally said, okay, and since I agreed to this meeting, you're going to come over um, to my brokerage because this is a big, huge ask. And Courtney agreed. Well, Tisha's smart in her business mindset. That's why. She said it. She said, she, she said I have a meeting with the devil mm. to, to get this. She said, I am, I am the business. Well, okay. y'all, this broke my heart. We I, know, I know you wanted to get into this. So. so Mel meets with Nell, and apparently they haven't seen each other in a while. Uh, she asked Nell, how's her daycare going? Apparently she went through it uh, during her the COVID. video. Mm -hmm. the bed the bed yeah the bed uh but um you know they're where they need to be right now so that's good uh she congratulates mel on her skincare line and tells her that you know she needs some products for so do we mel <laughs> <laughs> so um she then asks her for life or how life is for her i'm sorry she asked mel how life is going for her, the dating life especially and mel says it's not as bad as people make it seem so production asked her about uh rumors they heard about her and her having somebody and mel is so perplexed that everybody is worried about who she's dating and feel there has to be more going on in huntsville than who she's laying up with and who she's not or not yeah <laughs> So I love who she said, with or not. I said, oh, okay, ma'am. So Nell shares about Martell crashing their date night and that they talked. Uh, she admits they've come a long way and Mel found her happiness and tranquility, but Martell is still trying to find that. So she says, but as far as the kids go, she wants to make sure they're in a good space because they're going to have to see each other forever, no matter how old they get. Mel said, uh-uh. Right. Um, they're going to be in each other's lives forever. And yeah, Mel's not here for that. So Nell tells her about Martel and what he shared about the babysitting situation. The 20 babysitters. Right. And Mel isn't surprised because he did the same thing when she decided to leave him. Um, and Mel says that he creates this false narrative about a handful of people watching her kids. And most of the time it's in her home and says it's been that way since she left in 2020. He's been running a smear campaign, basically in hopes that she would run back to him. And she says, but the same people he tries to turn against her would feel away, basically knowing that he's still trying to get back with her. And I was mm. like, that's not true. Also, oh, oh, oh. Um, and she doesn't know why anyone would believe Martel at this point. And he's been lying to them and her for years. She says she's tried it his way, but not everybody wants to deal with Martel. She talks about how he wants the same control that he had when they lived in the house together. And she won't allow him to disturb her peace. She gets emotional about not seeing the kids every day. And this wasn't the life that basically she wanted for herself and feels that he can't control her 
just because they have kids together. And so Mel says he spun this to make it look like it's about the kids and it's really controlling behavior. So he's happy that, or she's happy that Nell came to her and got her side of the story. Um, and she says she's changed her number five times in order to protect her peace. And I was like, go ahead. I feel bad for Mel. Cause um, he wrong, he wrong and he need to move on and just live his life and he can't because I know she just said that they tried to be uh, cordial and cool, but it's not like that no more because there's just no trust. Right. Now, <clears throat> Tisha is meeting with a fitness trainer named Brianna to do some kit boxing to which she invited Kiki. I was like, oh, but, but this is not what I thought it was. And Kiki Kiki. got some aggression. I thought, yeah. Kiki got there and Tisha said that she ready to uh to get to it because Kiki got some built up anger. I, I I thought they was gonna like get a ring or something. Right. I thought they, they was, was, I they thought was they just hitting better. better. Um, and she says that she wants her to get all that energy out before they sit down and talk, which I actually thought was a good idea. So after their boxing session, they sit down. Tisha tells her that, you know, she invited her there to figure things out and see if they can move forward. So she let her know that she had a conversation with Courtney and she really wants her to move past it and brought up how she lived with them um, when she first moved to Huntsville. And she just wants her to fix things. Now, right. Kiki agrees and says it's really unfair to the family. Tisha says, you know, that their kids are around the same age and it reminds her of them uh, when they started hanging around each other and says it's really sad that they don't include them in the holidays, include each other in the holidays. She says her heart is um, like, you know, she loves her and wants a relationship with her, but her mind is telling her, don't be a fool. Tisha, she spoke about the puppets being used at the um, reunion and says, you know, she really didn't uh, want to have to use them, but that's how she felt like she was being used. Mm -hmm. Now, Kiki says that she really didn't want to hurt her. So she told her pretty much everything that went on at the uh, Christmas party. Tisha said, boo, you didn't tell me what you said. You left that part out. And Kiki's like, of course, I didn't give you all the details. You, you just conveniently left yours out. Um, but says it was never her intention to play any part in something that would be so hurtful to her. Now, <clears throat> she felt that Marceau made it worse, that her and Marceau made it worse than it was. He just said, no, it was how it was. And she says that she plays with her words and she really needs to just come out and be more direct. <clears throat> you can't be saying stuff about her marriage, like playing around a bush about her marriage. And what do they call it? Open. Semantics. You're so stupid. Um, and basically it leaves the door open for people to assume and guess. Tiki says she feels the exact same way. But then a part of her felt like, how can you even say that? And then you did X, Y, and Z. I said, here we go again. We back at this mess. What, a her touch sharing her business? Yes, child. Yes. Oh, Tisha says that she don't feel like she's getting through to her. She's playing this both of us are wrong game. And um, basically, she's been doing it for the past 10 years. And she's not taking any ownership. And she doesn't feel like this is going to work out between them. So Tisha tells her she can't believe that, that she would go um, through to try and hurt her and bring her down. And basically right. tells her, what if I actually spoke on your marriage? And I don't know what she said at the end, but it looked like she said basically it's some shit. Or that would be fucked up. She said something like that. I said, oh, well, Tisha, I think. Don't get me talking. Tea. I'm not gonna report nothing. I ain't heard. Spill the tea. Spill the tea. But I think I did hear something about Kiki's marriage. See, this is this is why this is why I love this show. I'm ready for the next episode. I don't think really shows be having me feeling like this. Reality shows, anyway. Well, guys, it Chanel's out here feeling <laughs> for the tea. If you guys haven't already, please make sure that you hit that like button. You comment. You subscribe. And you hit the notification bell. Make sure that you're following us on all the platforms, the TikTok, the Twitter, the Facebook, the IG. And we just want to say thank you. I believe we're at like 415 now. We're just growing yes. and growing and I love yes. it. Yes. And I appreciate it. Let's keep doing it, guys. And uh, we will catch you in a couple of days for 
our review of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Have a good night. Good night. Bye.